Today we're gonna to look at trains, more specifically, trains in the movies. The Some of our favourite scenes. The trains in the movies. Will be the 1327. Check this out. Oh. Yo, this is a great sequence. The final 10 minute sequence from Gore Verbinski's The Lone Ranger. This is one of them films and it happens at least once or twice a year, well probably about 10 times a year nowadays. But there's always a film that gets picked where people want really lay into him, whether it's you know, Wild Wild West or The Phantom Menace, wherever it may be. This was a perfectly good film and even respectable people like Tarantino said how good it was. But this last 10 minutes in, in The Lone Ranger is incredible. It's just this great train chase and uh, two trains running parallel side by side and it's great when um, Tonto uh, with him Indianing up uh, that uh, goes from the top train so it's like two trains running side by side then it goes to another train the silver train running underneath and then it goes back to one train again well yeah that's the uh, Lone Ranger probably never see another Lone Ranger movie on the big screen that was Lone Ranger, now let's take a look at Silver Streak. I'm just going to make some adjustments to be trained. Silver Streak. Just watching this clip here though, if I had to explain to somebody about what 70% of my childhood, it's uh, Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor movies, people who've been in James Bond films, and people climbing up and down trains. And I know this is a quote unquote respectable film, and I think it's respected for being a great comedy, which it is. But one thing I don't think I've ever heard anybody mention is how good the screenplay is. So Gene Wilder has to keep getting back on the train and he keeps getting thrown off the train and he keeps getting back on the train. And it feels quite natural. It's not like, oh, he's off the train one second and then like 30 seconds later he's back on the train. You really genuinely feel like that. He has to, you know, find a clever way of getting back on the train. That sequence there was used in the intro to the full guy, you know, it was like the Lee Majors TV show based train stunts. Look how dangerous this is there. If Gene Wilder slipped over there, it'd be, you'd be toast. My little nephew Daniel was so jealous of me because I'm like a train driver. Ooh -ooh. And now one of the most important films ever made from 1896. Like Jermaine Jackson said, let's get serious. Bit of filmmaking 101 here, or should I say filmmaking 1896? This is literally one of the first pieces of famous film that was ever released. It's uh, the Lumiere brothers, the two French fellas who invented film. And it's uh, the train arriving to an interest station. The always the famous urban legend about this film was that people couldn't believe what they were seeing when they saw it at the cinema and were running out because they thought it was quote unquote real. But whether or not that's true is one thing, but it's as iconic as Cavnitot Caligari and Metropolis. When this meteor came from space, it was unstoppable. Just like this next film by Tony Scott. This is an incredible film. Uh, one of Tony Scott's last films. And I remember when I very first saw a TV spot for this, and you saw the train going on two wheels, or, well, you know, on one side, I should say, and I was just, oh my God, I've got to see this film. And I think I've said this on other videos as well, but I like it when you get something that's like quite self-contained, like a train chase, and you think, well, a train, it's got to go on rails, and it's got to go a certain speed, or there's only certain things you can do with it. And I really like how, you get really clever filmmakers or really clever designers. I mean, look how incredible that scene is there. I mean, obviously, it's, you know, I know they did a lot of this stuff for real in this film, but obviously, I assume that was CGI, but it still looks incredible and it's so action packed. But, you know, when you get people that take something that's quite standardized and just completely go in another direction with it, <laughs> no pun intended. Great sequence there, and there's Captain Kirk and Robert McCall in the same film. How about that for a crossover? Now we're going to look at the best Roger Moore film and one of the best Bonds, and this is Octopussy. I've got so many great memories of seeing Octopussy. I saw it at the cinema and on DVD and video and HD. But when you look at this for a chase as well, like saying just taking, you know, something that's, you know, oh, a train chase, okay. But then you've got this car 
that's being chased by another car and you've got Bond in a car that's got to get from this car into this train the tr another train comes along the other side of the railway tracks and now it knocks this car into this into this lake if you look here look at another super dim look, look how close that's the one must have been just wiped out and then there you've got like Bond hanging off the top of this uh, and that, that, there's the uh, the car chasing him with the bad guy from Beverly Hills Cop in Rambo 3 and it's like oh my god I've got a little model of that car and it's on the railway tracks down there but thanks for watching the trains in movies video and keep it locked oh fuck my favourite train pieces you want to buy